Good morning. So, I woke up still feeling like almost depressed to not go to the the race. Like this is like weighted sadness. Sorry. Um, and then David has a soccer game today, and I remember that I think it's not not an away game, which means I can go to it. So something like the responsibility of being a parent to help motivate you to just keep on fucking <laughs> so um, I think I'm gonna be leaving a couple minutes late but I'll be there I'll be there with bells on watching little David play some soccer so here we go. start to my day soccer mom Law student. And soccer. I said hello. So we're at Southside Soda Shop. My son and his friend Joseph. There they are. We just, David and Joseph just finished their soccer game. We're meeting my friend from church, Mary LaCour, for lunch. And then we're all going to um, a local gathering in downtown Goshen um, to support DACA. I'm, um, I'm excited to see Mary. I haven't made it to church in months and I miss church a lot. I miss the people there. So I'm really glad that, that Mary asked us to join her at the DACA rally, as well as um, come to lunch with us. So that's great. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice, it's a really nice thing. And it's fun to get to hang out with David. He's like my favorite person in the world. I love this little guy so much. David, say hi to all my, my uh, subscribers. David says hi to all my subscribers, so I hope everyone's having a great day, and there will be more adventures as the day goes on. So I was just, um, I've been processing today. Like when I woke up, there's like, like that level of sad depression that I'm not going on the mudroom that I've been looking forward to. And then the motivation that I'm a parent. And so I need to go to my kid's soccer game. And so that got me started today. And like with anything, like I've been planning for over nine months. I've been training um i've been really looking forward to this and so it's um legitimate that i feel disappointment that i'm not going on this warrior dash mud run today and um i got to go to david's soccer game which was great um i got a message from a woman that i go to church with that i haven't seen in a while and said hey do you want to go to this the, the community gathering to support daca with me and which is awesome I've never hung out with that woman and of course I love going to stuff like that and so yeah I do want to go and David and his friend Joseph got to come with us um, there's this other part of me that thinks that like even in the scale of like what's going on in our world right now like my problem isn't really a real problem um, the hurricanes the earthquake in Mexico like the the wars and atrocities happening all over um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and the other like thing just to name, I'm not, I'm not going because when I was stressed and actually needed help to plan and prepare for this, 
the person I'm supposed to go with, once again, because they're not stable in their own lives, couldn't put their own stuff aside and be selfless and just help and support me. I don't need help that often. I'm pretty independent. And every once in a while, I need to freak out and like be stressed out and ask for help. And when I do, I expect people that are in my life that love me to, to just be there. Like I would be for them. Like unapologetically, I'm okay with saying I'm freaking out and I want help right now and expecting it to happen or an explanation of why it's not. And so the friend that I'm supposed to go with couldn't, couldn't get past their own crap to like say, oh, someone I love needs me to support them. And so I want to drop my nothing that I'm doing and go and help them. And said so they went into their own yuck. And it's just, I mean, it's a history. It's a history that they have, that they're not able to expand and like support people in their lives when they need it because they don't take care of themselves in a way that they're able to give to others. So I should, whatever, I'll just name it. It is what it is. And my last thought was that sometimes I, um, I believe like things in life may happen for a reason. Not always, not all things are like meant to be or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but there are times where, um, like I have to trust in the existence of how things play out and that like maybe prevented things that I wasn't aware of that's negative or whatever. And so to just be a space of acceptance with things as they are is important to me. And I feel like I'm there. So that's great. today. One, he scores a soccer, he scores a goal in soccer. And afterwards he says, Mom, you see me score a goal? I'm like, yeah, baby, I saw that. He said, did you see my victory dance? I said, I didn't see your victory dance. What was it? Um, this isn't appropriate for children. You can have them close their eyes. This whole next section. And their ears. So he does this. And I'm like, what? He's 13 years old. He's 13 years old and his victory dance. I was like, that is like ejaculation. Like, what, what kind of dance set? You're 13 in junior high soccer. Like, that's not, that's not appropriate, David. No, oh, I think it's funny. It's like, gotcha. I'm like, Ugh. okay, so one. What is wrong with little boys? I don't know. Like, this is not, like, we don't go around and do things like that at this house. Not that there's anything wrong in any way with masturbating. It's something you do in your private time with yourself. And that's, I completely support. I don't need to know about it, but I completely, like, support it. Go ahead, do that. Alone time. We don't go around and, like, shh, talk about it. Or, like, not even just, like, like that is not the place. Okay, that's enough words for that one. Story two of Davisito. We're at DACA. DACA's um, the deferred action for children when children are brought into the country illegally and they spend their whole lives here pretty much and grow up here, um, graduate from high school here. They're part of our community. President Obama passed a thing so that they can go to college and work and get driver's licenses. They still don't get social security numbers. There's still like tons of roadblocks in front of them, but they have more opportunities than they would otherwise as undocumented. And the DACA people I know, amazing people, like are part of active parts of the community doing great things. Any type of organization is stronger and better based on diversity. And so we as a nation want immigrants here. Like our companies and the ways we function will be much more dynamic, productive, and beneficial if we actually, if the employee base or whatever is from a diverse field. Like this is, this is science right here, okay? So we want immigrants as part of our country. They, they benefit us. Not only that, the the friends I know, like they're just good people. Like they spend their time helping and supporting and they make this community a better place to live in. We are blessed for them to be in this country. So um, support DACA. Here or there, my son's, I take my son and his friend to this community thing and he says, he goes, like, he needs to use a restroom. He goes to a local restaurant. He texts me, hey, it's happening here. Can I stay? I said, you can stay for 20 minutes, and then you need to come back because um, 
this is part of who you are. He writes me back and says, this is not part of who I am. I don't even care about this stuff. It's part of who my papa is. I said, okay, baby. See you in 20 minutes. He said, okay, see you, mom. So it's like, I want to create as many opportunities for him as possible to understand where he came from and who he is and what it means to be Latino. And the fact that like, because his papa was undocumented, he doesn't get to grow up with his papa because of U.S. immigration law. U.S. immigration law is a history in many different ways of how we treat workers, how we treat students, how we treat families, how we treat immigrants as a nation is horrific tra travesty. It's shameful. My son came from an undocumented immigrant. So this is part of his history. And he needs to know it, but I also am aware, like if I push stuff down him, he'll reject it. And so like, he's got to find that on his own and I'll just create random opportunities for him to be exposed to it. And maybe when he's 20 or 30 or 40, all of a sudden he'll be like, oh, I'm glad I know about this stuff. But right now he said, it's not part of my life. It's part of my papa's. Silly little boy, you are part of your papa. Okay, that's my David stories for the day.